Good afternoon. My name is Marshall Clow. I work at uh, Qualcomm down in San Diego. And um, I'm going to be talking about String View today. Some of the things you can do with it, some of the things you probably shouldn't do with it. Um, so, a little bit of administrivia, administri administrivia excuse me. Um, if you have questions along the way, just put your hand up and, and uh, I'll, I'll point at you. Don't need to save them till the end. Although, some questions I may look at you and say, you know, I have a slide coming up on that. Just hold on to it for a second. But I'll try to answer them right away. So I'll start with the first question. String view. Is this what Bjarni was talking about on Monday and what uh, Herb was talking about on Tuesday? Um, no. This is something else. This is, uh, this is something that has been working its way through the standards process for probably the last 18 months. It is currently in the uh, Library Fundamentals TS, the technical specification. And you can get it in a recent version of both uh, uh, Clang and um, Lib or, uh, GCC. And I am not sure what the status is in Visual Studio. Somebody in the room knows, I'd appreciate knowing. Visual Studio 2015. It would not surprise me to discover that they had shipped um, an implementation of String View in uh, 2015, but I do not know for sure. Okay, so given that, what is string view? Um, there's a whole pile of words there, and we'll try to unpack it. The class template basic string view uh, describes an object that can refer to a constant contiguous sequence of care like objects. All right, first question. I thought you were talking about string view, and what's this basic string view? Um, basic string view is a template that's templated on a type of, a type of character and a character traits class. And so specializations of basic string view are string view and some other classes. In much the same way that standard string is a specialization of standard basic string. So there are, um, there are four specializations of basic string view that are defined in, uh, in the library fundamentals to this. There's string view, which deals with Characters, W string view with deals with W care T, um, UTF eight or UTF sixteen string view. That's not the right name. Um, that deals with uh, sixteen bit uh, UTF characters and the same for thirty two. Just like there are four specializations of basic string view for dealing with the same four character types. So there's a very much a match between strings and string view, and we'll see that during the presentation, that there is a, there's a lot of commonality between string and string view, which is not really surprising because string view is meant to interoperate very, clo operate very closely with strings. So um, what's other words here? Refer to a constant contiguous sequence. Constant. String, if you have a string view, you cannot change the underlying data. Okay, constant. This is, this is um, emphasized by the name, string view. This is a view into some strings. You can look at them, you can't change them. You can change things about the view. Um, for example, you can narrow it and make it refer to less characters, or you can reassign it and make it point at different characters, but you cannot actually change the characters. Um, contiguous sequence. Okay, it's a sequence of zero or more characters that are contiguous in memory, like in a literal string constant that you write double quote A, B, C, D, E, F. Those are contiguous in memory. Like in a STD string, um, in a buffer that you have malloced and you have put characters in, in a vector of care, those kind of things. Contiguous meaning they're not in a list or in a deck or, some, or a tree of some kind but they're, they're right next to each other in memory. And care-like objects. Um, this basically means that they, the types that the standard usually refers to is what it talks about characters. So there's care and, and W care and UTF-8 care and UTF-16. Okay, any questions about that? We'll start here and go back there. Yes. Okay, so the, the comment was that Visual Studio 2015 does not have uh, string view in their uh, 
library fundamentals TS implementation. Shame on STL. I'll have to give them a hard time. Yes. Um, it's, it's better defined than that later on, but I'm not sure I'd call it well defined. It, it has to be um, a, a fundamental type. And I, so, you know, you can, you can manipulate using memset and memcopy and so on. Um, other than that, it's pretty much always used for the four types I mentioned. Um, if you specialize it for other types, other fundamental types, it should work just fine, but I don't think anybody really tried it. There's, there's more words in the library fundamentals that say, um, that limit, it, limit uh, its applicability, but I don't remember the words off the top of my head. I saw another hand back there, yes. So the question is, it, does ArrayView have the same limitation that you can't modify the underlying um, underlying sequence? And the answer is, is currently in, in, in the library fundamentals TS, there is not an array view. Um, there are a couple proposals that people are talking about, and but none of them have been put in either standard or a technical specification. They've mostly been foundering on the, um, the disagreements on the best way to handle multi-dimensional arrays. A one-dimensional array view is actually really simple and could be very useful, but People are looking for a more general solution. Yes. Okay. So the question is: Is the uh, is the implementation um, close to what Boost already has as Boost uh, string ref or the LLVM implementation? Um, yes, but it is not identical. Um, I actually wrote the Boost implementation from an earlier version of the StringView proposal because it was originally called StringRef, and it was based on a combination of the LLVM, uh, the LLVM uh, class and a class that was internal to Google. It was a guy, the proposal came from somebody at Google, um, Jeffrey Askin, um, and I mean, I don't know who who initiated it inside Google, but Jeffrey was the author. Um, but anyway. Um, and so the boost string ref is not quite the same as this, but actually fairly soon I will be updating the boost string ref to be pretty much identical to this. And it'll be adding a few more features. Um, I, I haven't looked really closely. I don't think there's any really breaking changes, although I'm very tempted to, to change the name of the one in boost to string, ref, string view instead of string ref, and that would certainly be a breaking change. Yeah. Um, I saw another hand here. Titus. Okay. Okay. So. So the, the comment was that Titus had asked Herb at a previous committee meeting whether or not the, the committee had adopted the, the uh, convention of referring to things as view when they were, um, where they were references to an immutable sequence of some kind. And the answer he got was yes. That was last November. But over here. Okay. Um, so what does it look like? Um, what does it look like? It's, it's a string, it's a pointer and a length. That's all it is. Okay, that's all the string view is inside. Um, start, of, start of the range, length gives, gives you effectively a, one, a pointer to one past the end. I mean, you could implement it as two pointers. It, it doesn't make any difference, really, except internally. Okay, given that, um, a string view has almost the same um, interface as a constant std string. So basic string view care, which is also known as string view, has almost the same interface as basic string care. Okay, there's a traits class there too on both sides. But um, except with anything that might modify the underlying data, stripped out. 
So there's no insert, there's no erase, there's no non-const operator brackets, there's no clear, um, there's no pop back, there's no pushback. Um, I don't know what else. I'm sorry, substr? Substr is not a problem because substr, substr does not change the underlying data. Replace would change the underlying data. You know what? Um, that one's pretty easy to write as a free function, but I think that uh, that the idea was that this. I'm, that's a good question. Why not? Well, because re, because replace on this STD string changes the underlying data, so that the feeling was this was this was meant to be pretty much a drop-in replacement for a const string reference, and so having something with the same name that conceptually does the same thing but behaves differently was thought to be confusing. Yes, over here. I'm sorry? It does not have Seaster. The question was, does string view have Seaster? And it does not. And the reason for that is very simple. It cannot, it cannot reliably um, provide the null at the end. STD string, with an STD string, there's actually another character on the end of the string that's a null that the object maintains so that when you call Seaster, it just hands you a pointer to the start of its data. Seaster and data are, are synonyms on a standard string. And the, the object ensures that there's a null at the end. Um, string view, because it doesn't actually own the characters, can't change the characters it points to, can't do that. Um, give you an example, if I take a Seaster, say of, you know, I have, if I have a string A, B, C, D, E, F, and I take a string, I create a string view which starts at the C and is three characters long, D, E, F, well, sorry, two characters long, D, E, the next character is going to be an F. And, and the string view cannot put a null there. It could allocate some memory, copy it in there, and put a null on and return that to you, but that kind of defeats the purpose of a string view. A string view is meant to be cheap. It's not, it's supposed to avoid copying data. It's supposed to avoid doing memory allocations. I saw another hand go up. No, good. Okay. Oops. How is it implemented? Yeah, sorry, pointer. I got one ahead of me. Um, so what's that non-owning bit again? I, I mentioned that a little bit. Non-owning bit is basically doesn't own the, um, doesn't have any control over the characters it points to. None at all. It's just a pointer and a link. What does this mean? It means that it pushes the lifetime management back on the caller, back on you if you're using it. So if you have, um, if you're doing something like, say, parsing a file, okay, and you allocate a buffer and you read the contents of this text file into the buffer, or memory map it, or whatever, however you do that, and then you start parsing it, it's really easy for you to pull, you know, to, to make string views that point to part of the file and pass them around and so on, and this is all fine until you're done with that file and then you, you deallocate that buffer or unmemory map the file, and then all those string views point to something that isn't there anymore, and it's your responsibility to make sure that you don't use them anymore. Yes? Um, no. So the, the comment was if you have like a backing store of a file and you had a string view into it, would the, the backing store have to be constant so that you would be assured that nobody else would change this data underneath you? And the answer to that is yes, if that was the pattern that you were worried about. But most of the times, um, most of the uses that I have seen for string view, it's like, you know, like parsing an input file or something you got off the network or something, and it, it comes in and then it never gets changed. Um, if you, if you're, if that's, worrisome to you that 
that the data that the string view is pointing to that might change, then yes, you have to make some kind of arrangements to ensure that it doesn't change. Um, Titus. Yeah, the same, well, the same would be true of using any const string ref, right? That you have to worry about somebody changing the string that the reference refers to at any time. Um, yeah, I, I had a long discussion with somebody um, a few months ago about in C++11, now that we have, um, now that we have a threading model, I pointed out to them that there's been a, a difference, a semantic difference now. If, you're, if you write a function that takes a const string ref, right, before C++11, what it meant was, what you, what you could say is, fine, this isn't going to change for the lifetime of my routine. Okay, now it means I can't change this. And that's a subtly different thing. You know, something in another thread or whatever can, can change it. And the same thing applies to a string view, except that you know, you don't necessarily have to have a uh, threading involved. Okay. So when would you use a string view instead of a string? Um, so let's, let's back up a little bit and talk about why do you want a string view? Actually, no, we'll wait, wait for that until I get an example. But anyway, if you, um, anywhere you pass, you have a pure function, a function that operates only on its inputs or maybe some global state. It doesn't actually hold on to references and so on. Um, anywhere you're passing a const string ref or maybe a, uh, a const care star, you can pass a string view. Um, returning from, from a function where you want to return a reference to a part of a string or a string that you know it's the lifetime's okay. And also the um, they reference to a large, you know, a part of a long-lived data structure. Um, okay, example, toy example, but a good example. Uh, and this is where we start getting into why. So here's a real simple example. We have some code down the bottom that calls a routine on a const care star and checks to see if the first character of it is a C. And what does extract part do? It takes a const uh, care star by, it takes a character reference by a constant and creates a substring out of it. So, how many strings are created to just run this code? So um, I can I can say I'm 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 confident that there are there are at least two, okay. I'm also say if if a, your compiler does not do return value optimization, there's two more. There's at least there's at least two and possibly four. So let's walk through this, okay? The call to the call to extract part, right? It takes the um, character literal a b c d e f g, counts its length allocates memory, copies the data into the memory it allocated, constructs a, a std string, and passes it to extract part by const reference. Const reference then, or const reference, extract part, excuse me, um, calls um, substr, passing that also, oh, or passing that um, by const reference because because that's a member function, so it has an implicit this parameter at the front, which it passes by const reference. So there's not another copy made. Um, substr creates a new string, allocates memory, copies data, internal to substr, returns it, which might be another copy, although really compilers are getting better these days. They're probably not a, a copy there, but there might be. And then extract part returns it again, which might be another copy, but hopefully not. And then we call front on that, on that temporary that returned, to get the first character, compare it to C, and then throw it away. So I count one length calculation, four memory allocations. Let's just, well, let's just say there's only two, but in any case, two, two memory allocations, two sets of copying data, and then two memory deallocations, all for some, all to determine that something's a C. Okay, 
Small, the small string optimization helps a little with this. You could get rid of some of the memory allocations. You know, in this example, you might get rid of all of them, all of the memory allocations, but you still have to copy the data and you have to, um, have to count the length there. Was that what you were gonna say? Okay, sorry, stepped on your line. Um, anyway, that's a lot of work for this. Okay, um, so why do we care about temporary strings? Yes? Probably can't align the copies as well, but you still have to create at least, yeah, you still have to create two. You can elide the copies on the way out, the returns. Maybe. Yeah. So, anyway. Yes, it is. The small, his comment was the small spring optimization is awesome. And also said that for this example, it's quite possible that the compiler would inline everything and try to get rid of most everything. And yes, but this is a toy example. Um, why do we care about temporary strings? Well, temporary strings are actually not really that small. I mean, they, they consist of three pointers. I mean, at which on a 64-bit machine is, is 24 bytes. Um, they can cause memory allocations. The SSO, the small string optimization, helps with that. And you have to copy the data. Okay, copying character data is not hard. You can use memcopy or something like the moral equivalent of, but it's still you have to copy data. And there's nothing quite as fast as not doing anything. Um, so. Um, one, of, one of the things that, uh, that also has changed from C++ OC to C++ 11 is there's just general front matter in the, in the start of the, uh, the standard that basically says in a threaded environment, um, access to a shared resource has to be serialized. It has to be by, protected by a mutex or something else or you get race conditions and then you, you're in undefined behavior land and that is just so not good. Um, yeah, I've given talks on undefined behavior. I don't think at this conference, but at ACCU and at, um, at C++ now. But in any case, you don't want to be under, in undefined behavior land. That is not a happy place for, for getting reliable results out of your software. Anyway, the point of this is the heap is a shared resource, okay? In a multi-threaded environment, access to the heap, at right access to the heap, meaning allocations and deallocations and so on, have to be serialized. Okay, and so if you're creating a temporary string that requires a heap allocation and somebody else is doing something similar, you're gonna have to wait till that heap allocation is done before you can start yours. And yes, you can play games with allocators and thread local allocators and so on and mitigate this, but even better, like I said before, is no work is much better than even the smallest amount of work. So if you can not do heap allocations, you're, you're ahead of the game, which is why the small string optimization is such a big win. It's not even that it saves that much space, it's that you don't have to go to the heap. Okay, um, same example, one little change, right? String view, that's the only change to this example. Okay, that's the only change. So what happens here? Um, we. Okay, we call extract part. We have to create a string view. String view has an implicit conversion from a const care star. Okay, it has to traverse the list because it needs a pointer and a length. It has to, not the length, it has to traverse the, uh, the constant to find the null on the end. So it knows now that it's A and seven. Right, seven. Okay, it passes this to, um, to extract part extract part, then calls substring on it, because string view has a substring member function, it's the same as std string, like I said, it, it pretty much has the same interface as a const standard string, um, which returns a new string view that refers to characters two, three, four, five in the original string view returns that, returns that, and then we call front on it, which returns the first character, C. So what have we done here? 
We've created two string views, maybe four, if, you know, if we don't have return op value optimization. But we have no heap allocations, no copying of data. Uh, we have to traverse the sequence once um, to actually find out the length at the beginning. So instead of, instead of two or four heap allocations and two or four cop making data copies, we have none of those. And your code runs faster. Um, now, this is, this is the kind of thing, this is the kind of thing where Spring View shines. Okay, you have, you have something that takes a, a const std string ref, and you want to, uh, and you can ch replace it with a string view, when what? Your, your function doesn't make a copy of the string or hang on to a reference to the string, because then you have lifetime issues, right? Or, um, you know, you don't stashing it in some kind of data structure, long-lived data structure. Um, and you don't need to write to the underlying string view, hence the const. Okay. Um, any questions about this? Yes. No, there's a temporary string view constructed. It, the uh, the, const, the the string constant exists exists for the entire lifetime of the program. The question is who's owning the memory, and the answer is it's it's a it's a string literal that lives you know lives in your executable. Yes. Well, uh, the question is why not an array constructor, um, one that doesn't have to construct the string. There is a constructor that takes a pointer and a length, but when we discussed that, there's, embedded nulls. yeah, embedded nulls are a problem. But the other thing is, is how many is that there? I mean, that that has type that has the type of an array of eight, because there are really eight characters there. There's the null, and so when the array constructor, do you want an array, do you want a string view that has eight things in it with the null on the end? No, you almost almost always want seven, but Sometimes you do want eight, and so it, hence the embedded nulls comment. And so the, the, the thought was, you know what? Treat, it's a null terminated string, you find the null. If you know how many characters you want, you use the other constructor where you have pointer and length. I think you are next. I'm sorry, say that again. The could, the could, the compiler could. I don't know if it will, but it could. Yes, Michael. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, in this case, you know, there are eight, eight of them there. So here's, a, here's another interesting thing. Um, I, I talked about how this, the basic string view was, was templated on, a, um, on the character type. And I kind of glossed over the fact that it, has, that it has, like standard string, it has a character traits template parameter as well. And one of the calls to character in the traits class is length. And so you can, you can in fact specialize this and use whatever delimiter you want. Um, if you want 255 as, as your end of, end of sequence marker, you can do that. Um, this is you know, just like std string. And so, um, so basically the, the, what people decided was, you know, if people wanted, an, the, the default case was felt to be this. You know, it's a, you know, it's a character literal, which we all think of as null terminated. And then if you have something with embedded nulls or uh, something like that, then give the link explicitly. Yes. Um, the question was, because this has the same uh, 
semantics as std string. There's not any, any um, range checking in the substring call. No, that's not true. Just like std string, it will not give you a string which stretches uh, mirror. It's returning you a new, a new string. And so if you say like 2.7, um, it will give you from position 2 up to the end of the string. Give you back an empty string. Just like the standard string. Yes. 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 It's, right. The, so the question was, is if you have a long string and you don't want to pay the cost of the length because you already know it, yes, you, can you create a string view from a pointer and a length? Absolutely. Um, there are you know, three constructors, right? There's one, one from an std string, one from a, uh, from a, null, from a const char star, which is, it, you basically calls the character traits to find out what the length is. And then there's one which is just a care, uh, a care star pointer and a length. And so that one doesn't ever, ever ask anybody how long it is because it knows. So if you want, you know, you had a text file that had an embedded nulls, you say begin end. Actually, I, I believe there are, no, there are not. I was going to say there's, there's a constructor with a pair of iterators, but I don't think there is because then the onus would be on you to ensure that they were contiguous. Caspar. Does it cons transparently convert to string? No. There is a uh, call, there's a member function on there called toString, which will create a new std string and return it to you. It was felt that this would be a bad idea because that's potentially an expensive operation. You have to allocate memory, you have to copy things. It's meant to be explicit. If, in fact, um, this gets accepted into the standard, I would expect that std string would, re would get a converting constructor from a string view, but that it would be explicit. You would have to actually say um, that I, I want this to happen, rather than happen, happen implicitly. Yes? Why does it, what? Um, why did we not define a UDL for string view? Um, we had some discussion about that. And at one point we, uh, we had um, SV um, for them. And I don't know what happened to that. Thank you. Um, it might even still be there. I don't know. Um, certainly, if it gets put in the standard, we should have one of those. Just a sec. <laughs> so the question was, um, can it explain UDL? UDL is, the, is shorthand for user defined literal. And it's basically, it's a, it's a way of defining a simple way to construct objects. For example, if you say quote 234 quote s, that will construct a standard string with 234 in it. And we would have sv or something like that for, to create a string view the same way. Okay, um, next slide. Um, here's something that we see a lot, um, that the, the, the LVM team saw a lot when they were moving to string view, they had um, you know, some call that took a const care star and life was okay. You know, and they, they had some strings and they wanted to call it and so they'd call cster. And um, this is still, this is fine, this works. But somebody said, you know, ooh, const care star, mm, that's a problem. We don't like that anymore. That's, you know, that's old and tired. We should use the new shiny stuff. And you know, Titus and his team went off and wrote a tool that ran through all of Google's code base and changed these all to const std refs. Great, right? Perfect. So who can tell me what happens in that last line there? I can, I can tell you the first thing that happens is it, is it compiles and it runs correctly. I, I'm, I'm getting to that. But how about anybody on this side? Yes. It will make a temporary copy of the string, right? It will take the string foo, call its cster member, get a const care star, make a temporary string, allocate memory, copy data, calculate the length, and then call legacy call, and then destroy the temporary string. 
This is, this is a silent performance stealer for you. Um, so, next step, legacy call, um, string view. We still, we still don't, don't have to change the, um, the, any of the calling sites. Okay, legacy call, hi mom. Okay, you have to traverse to find the length, but you had to traverse to find the length when you had a const string as well. But you don't have to actually copy any data. You don't have to do memory allocations. Um, the call of foo seaster, again, you have to traverse and find the length, but there's no memory allocations. There's a temporary string view made there in both of those cases, but those are cheap. And in the last case, if you just say foo, which is absolutely the right thing for this version, um, it's still the right thing here because there is an implicit conversion from a STD string to a string view, and that's really cheap because basically it calls the two item constructor pointer and length. It calls it data size. Boom. You know, no counting, no copying, no nothing. Yes. Yes, that's absolutely true. There's a, there's a semantic change here if you have a null in the middle. Yeah, the, the if, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yay, yay tests. Yay tests. Okay, any other questions about this example? I mean, I apologize for the slide wariness of these examples. You know, they have, to, they have to fit on a slide, which means they're really kind of toy examples, but still. Um, right. Right. So, no, the, no, the, the, what I'm saying is, except for this bottom call here, okay, it's all going to behave the same. Because if you're, if you assume that the, that legacy call basically went from the pointer up to the null. Okay. Yeah. No, no I, I, I did not mean to imply that. I meant to imply, you know, something that's been in your code base for a long time. Yes. Right. Unless they're explicitly, unless they're taking function pointers, in which case, then then it's a problem. I'm sorry. Say that again. I didn't. Uh, care, uh, string view is implicitly constructible from a care star. What? But not. Oh yeah. Right. Yes. You you do in in 
In this case, yes, you change, you change internal to legacy call, but the same with that, right? If you change it from a const care star to a, to a string ref, you still have to, um, a, a, a string reference to string, you have to change the, the body inside. I was talking about changing the, the outside. Okay. Right. You do, you, yes. Well, it, you do have to make fundamental changes, yes. If, you, if the first thing you did in the legacy call was to calculate the length and then work basically off of pointer and length, then you're golden. But if, you were, if you're doing things that assume that it's null terminated, then yeah, you're going to have to make more changes internal. But I figure that you know, internal to legacy call, those are, those are things that change in one place. And those, those are easier to fix than things that change in 10, 100, or 1,000 places, or 100,000 places. Anyway, um, string view is constructible from these three things. I've talked about this a little more, a little bit before. Um, the null terminated string, or the string that, uh, a, a basically not even a null terminated string, but a string pointer. Um, this requires traversing the string to find the length. Um, all the other ones, the other two are very cheap. No, I'm not. Not two iterators because it's easy to have iterators that don't describe contiguous storage. Yeah, but if you have two pointers, you just subtract them and you have a length. You know, we could do that inside or you can do that externally. It's, it's, um, they're, they're moral equivalents. Um, okay. Other questions about the constructors? Um, string view interoperates with, uh, std string. Um, you can compare them. You can compare an std string to, uh, to a string view or to a null terminated string. Um, you can, the whole idea was that you could basically drop in string view in places where you had a constant string because they have the same interface. Lots of people have, set, have thought, myself included, that uh, the interface to std string was um, politely say a, a bit overdone. Um, string view has the same interface in general. Uh, it was felt that it was more important to have it have the same interface than it was to say, you know, that string is a little overdone. It was meant to be a drop-in replacement. Yes? It doesn't give you... Right. You, yeah, if, you, if you're going to, if you have a string view and you need a null terminated string, you're going to have to do some work. Yes, because it doesn't give you cster. That's exactly correct. Yes. What? Yes, you have. You get algorithm. You get iterators. You get const iterators. They're the same. They're both constant. But you have both iterator and const iterator types, and you can, and you can do r begin, r end, c begin, c end, all all the the iterator goodness. So yeah, it works very well with all the standard algorithms as long as it doesn't change stuff. So you can do find if, or copy if, or, or search, or whatever. Um, and, it, and I will point out that it works just fine with the, uh, the other stuff in the standard library that has a whole bunch of new searching algorithms, including you know, Boyer Moore and Boyer Moore Horsepool. They work great with string view because they don't know anything about string view. Yes? Can you, <laughs> I knew somebody was gonna ask that. Can you construct a string view from null pointer? Sure. Absolutely. Um, you better give it a zero length because you know no, you can't actually indirect a null pointer. You can't reach through a null pointer. But yeah, it's undefined behavior. But I'm sorry. From a false? No, it's it takes a pointer, uh, not a. I, I sure hope not. No, it, I mean we, we have a typed language. Let's not abuse the language. Um, you can you can, can you can do it from null putter certainly. I mean, in fact, that's the default state. If you default construct a string view, you get a length of zero and a and a pointer of null. And like like um, std string, you can call data and you can call size, and it'll give you the pointer. It'll give you the size. Um, if you get a zero size, you better not go looking at the pointer. You and then you. Uh, 
Um, you know, this, the conversion from a string to a string view is, in, is an implicit conversion. And to string view to string, it would be explicit. Yes, it's, it's not explicit right now because the string view is in library fundamentals, which is not actually part of the standard. And so we, are not, we didn't change std string. It must, it must have been, okay, it must be brand new, because I, I missed that, because, yeah, we have, we have the, the thing, they, they call to string, which returns a string. Okay, yes. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. We'd, we'd prefer the users to, to the size because, as, as we go back to this example here, this, this, this string, here, this, this thing is an array of eight characters. So you want a string view with a length of the size of eight, even though there are seven characters there plus a null. So that's, that was why you said, you know, for the, the default there is to just take Calculate the length from the traits. If you if you want it, yes. <laughs> that was a, the question. Is are there any observable differences between a null string view and an empty string view? And the answer is um, yes, there are. This was a, a matter of some controversy and a long discussion. Um, are there differences between any two strings that compare equal? Well, sure, you can call data on both of them and compare the pointers, and they're different. Um, if you have two string views that compare equal, which might say that they're, they're both of zero length, they compare equal, you can call data on them and compare the pointers, and you find that the pointers are different. So yes, absolutely, they're, um, they're both empty string views. There's not really anything, at any any idea of a null string view. There's a string view whose data pointer is null, but that's not a null string view. It's just, it's an empty string view. Anything, any pointer and a zero length are going to compare the same. Okay. Did that? Um, Okay, we have some uh, added functionality as well for our string view. Um, not a lot that's not in standard string. Um, there's this idea of remove prefix and remove suffix, which is basically a, a uh, substringing operation that's uh, specialized for the beginning and the end. You can think of what remove, remove suffix does, right? It just adjusts the length. And remove prefix, adjust the pointer and adjust the, and adjust the length, slice it over into. And it's, this is very, very cheap because there's no data being moved, right? You just update a pointer in it or a size. Um, writing trim, for example, for a string view would be, should be really easy. You know, you, you go to the end and you, and you trim off stuff, and you go to the beginning and you trim off stuff, and you're done. And, you know, there's no data to move around. You don't have to actually d delete the characters out of the middle and shuffle everything over. Much cheaper than in a string. Yes. Um, question is, does it provide built-in protections for underrun or um, overrun for remove prefix and remove suffix? I do not believe it does. You're just, um, I think it, in, in the standard it just says, you know, precondition that, the, that the, si the number of characters you're removing has to be less than or equal to the size. Okay. Um, Drawbacks of string view. And there are really, there are two, okay? The first one is that the gentleman over here has, has popped on. Um, a string view is not necessarily null terminated. Um, and, and in general, it's not, okay? It, when you 
when you create a string view out of a sequence of characters, you have no guarantee that the next character is a null, and the string view has no way of knowing that, no way of enforcing that. If you need a null terminated string, it's easy to make one, but it involves creating a string, right? Allocating memory, copying data, putting the null on the end. Um, if you can live without that restriction, um, then string view is, uh, can save you a lot of effort. But if, if you have stuff be, that you have to, you know, that you have to pass to some legacy C API that you can't change, then this is going to be a problem and string view may not be the best solution for you. Um, the second problem is lifetime management. Um, there's no connection between the, um, the string view and the storage it points to, except what you make yourself, and logical or programmatically or, or just no, that's fine. Um, however you want to do that. Um, this is why the examples have to do with um, you know, simple procedure calls. It's really good for passing as parameters instead of a const string ref. This is, this is one of the places it shines. Um, as long as your procedures, you know, just, just do calculations based on the data and um, don't actually change it and don't, like, hang on to a reference to the, uh, the string and, and want to refer to it later, then it's, this is a really good solution. Um, or if, you know, you're a compiler and you're, you're parsing a source file and you, you have it, um, you have this big buffer falling around, hanging around in memory and you know that's not going to change, then it's a good solution. If you, um, on the other hand, if you, those don't satisfy you, those, you can't satisfy those requirements or that doesn't meet your usage model, then string view may not be the right choice for you. It's not meant to be this be all and end all solution to every problem. It's, it's meant to be something that solves a fairly common problem in a lot of code bases. So, you know, consider the, consider the drawbacks, consider the limitations, and if it works for you, that's great. Because, I, you know, you will find a, um, find a significantly uh, less, well, memory access, data copying, um, hopefully smaller passing, parameter passing, things like that. Um, questions about this? Yes. Life, yes, it says, sounds like lifetime management brings up some thread safety red flags. It does. Um, passing th string refs across thread boundaries is, um, again, the onus is on you to manage the lifetimes, not the string ref. Um, there was another hand over here. Yes. Consider this example. You have a string view that points there. You cannot change the underlying storage because it's probably mapped to a read-only memory region. Yeah, but no, the, the, uh, the idea was, and it and reflected in the name, was, was that string view was meant to be something that you could look at. Um, well, the original name was for this was string ref, and it's still called string ref in, in uh, the LLVM code base. But the name was changed to string view specifically to remind people that this is a read-only view into some storage as opposed to a general manipulator of the storage. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. This is not that adapter. Sorry. Um, uh, yeah. On the other hand, really, it's not that big a chunk of code. Um, it, it is. It was. Trust me, I've written this a couple times. This is not hard to write. And the nice thing about it is, since it's a template, um, my next slide tells you where you can get it. You can look at the at the implementation and see it's. It would. It isn't. It is less than an afternoon's work. 
it takes longer to write the test than it does to write the uh, the code. Titus, you had a question? Well, on that point, mm -hmm. uh, this class is coming from a lot of our like, recent experience in the LSM and in those scenarios, you just want to use a lot of code to remove removable points of one of the pictures. If our usage is abnormal, like before this makes it into the standard, we should have it in Right. Or, or even if it's not very rare, it's much rarer than the read-only case. I saw a hand over here in the back. Okay. Okay, so the comment was, is suppose you have a class that takes, that has two, two uh, strings as member, func as member variables, and, um, and you initialize them in the constructor. If you wanted to, if you want to, um, to allow your callers to initialize these uh, these member variables with a string, a const care star, and a pointer to length, you need six constructors. Um, with string view, you only need one constructor that takes two string views, and then you copy the data into the member variables. Lifetime management is not a problem, but you've also, you've eliminated five of the constructors because the string view is so, uh, that was, no, that wasn't the word I was looking for. I, I, I'm going to say promiscuous, even though that isn't the right word, because it is. It accepts a lot of different uh, combinations. It's accommodating. Thank you. That's a that's a much better word. <laughs> um, anyway, um, that's not a, that's an advantage I had not actually thought of. But yeah, I like that. Um, okay. Yeah, if you add a third string, suddenly you have you need twelve constructors instead of one. Um, and the other thing is, is if you have string members, right, and you want to hand out pieces of those to somebody, you can return string views and, and then tell them that this string view is good as long as the object lasts. Yes. So who was first? Gaspar? Okay, got it. So the, the suggestion over here is that your your um, constructor could take the strings by value, and then and then move them into your member variables. Um, it does not have all the same constructors as string. The question is, does it is it is it part of the design that has all the constructors of std string? It does. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking of yeah, the the two iterator constructor for example, the string has string view does not. Why not? Because two iterators we have no way of knowing if they're contiguous. They they refer to contiguous storage. If you have two iterators and you know they're contiguous, take the address of the first one, you know, dereference and take the address and subtract them and hand me a pointer and a length. Um, yes. Right. Um, yeah. There's there's not really a point in const string view um, unless you know you want to have it as a member variable and or something. It's a mutator, um, but. 
Yeah, and the other thing is con string views are meant to be passed by value. Yeah. And so, you know, there's not really, you know, don't, don't really need to point and pass them by const reference, you just pass them by value. They're cheap to copy. Right. Yes, I, I know. Um, the, the only reason I can think of a, to have a const string view is as if it, it's a member variable of one of your objects. And you're, you're expressing the fact that this is not ever going to change during any, any the lifetime of your object. Yes? Okay, um, let, I have a couple slides left and I've just been notified that we are out of time. So let me pop through the last couple um, slides and then we'll go out in the hall and I'll ask, answer your questions for as long as you want. Uh, where can I get String View? Um, String View is, is available in the latest uh, libc++ and in libstdc++. Um, but not yet in Visual Studio 2015. Um, Boost has String Ref, which is based on an earlier version of this proposal, and this will be updated as soon as I get around to it, uh, which will hopefully be soon. Um, future directions, um, there have been multiple proposals for Array View, which is a similar thing. They have, um, they have foundered on mostly people disagreeing on how we handle multi-dimensional cases, but you know, this is a place where there's continuing work going on. And um, Eric Niebler, who is giving a, a plenary talk tomorrow morning about his work on uh, ranges. This is a more general solution, not limited just to contiguous sequences or just care-like things. I highly recommend Eric's talk um, tomorrow. Uh, he's going to take what seems to be a simple problem and it turns out to have surprising um, surprisingly complicated things, or surprisingly difficult things, and, and shows you how to solve it actually fairly simply. Um, and I'm done. So I will take more questions outside. Thank you.